So the year is 2020, and obviously things aren't really that great. A lot of things considered non-essential are still shut down, and this includes things like film development labs. So for film photographers, what options do you have if you can't go and get your film developed? Well, obviously, you resort to instant photography. So about a year ago, I did a video talking about this camera. You can check it out over there. This is the Pentax K1000. This specific model is the SE. Comes in a nice brown leather cover, and it's a great 35 millimeter camera. I recommend this for anybody getting into film photography. It is a phenomenal camera for beginners, intermediate, all the way up to pros. In fact, I shot a wedding for a friend of mine as his wedding gift with only slide film, only this camera, and it's still my daily driver. There's film in it right now. So generally, this is my go-to camera, but right now I can't really get film developed because I'm out of chemicals to develop what I normally shoot on, which is ektachrome. And on top of that, the labs are shut so I can't get the film that I normally do in negatives developed either. Kind of sucks. So if I can't go shoot on my favorite film camera and get the film developed, well, what am I supposed to do? Well, it's easy. I put a pause on using my favorite 35 millimeter camera and go find my favorite instant film camera. Yeah, believe it or not, this is a camera. This is a 1973 Polaroid SX-70. Now, I know it doesn't look much like a camera right now, but now it does. So I actually came across this camera while browsing through an antique store, and it caught my eye just because it had all of its original accessories with it. I still have the leather bag, the instructions on how to pack it, the warranty manual, and the instructions on how to unfold it and use it. This even came with flash bulbs, yeah, flash bulbs. So this doesn't have a flash built in. It actually has a little socket up at the top that you plug in flash bulbs for. Now, good luck finding new flash bulbs, but the cool thing is there are companies that make electronic flashes that hook directly into this and work just like a regular flash. Now, when I started this video and showed you a slide from a Polaroid, you probably didn't think it came from this camera. You were probably thinking a little more along the lines of this Polaroid camera something like a Sun 600 or any of these foldable cameras that were popular from the late 80s into the early 90s. And these are still good cameras, don't get me wrong, but they are extremely simple and they don't offer a lot of control for the photographer. They're pretty much point and shoots before point and shoots went digital. Apart from this like little slider at the front that lets you adjust how much light comes through it and the electronic flash, the actual shutter mechanism in this thing is not much more complicated than something like this. Try finding a cardboard box from the 30s that looks this good. Also, let me know if you guys want a video on this. This is an Ansco Sure Shot from 1936. So yeah, if you guys want a video on that, let me know. But the shutter mechanism is super simple and it's not too dissimilar from this. The only difference is this has a little bit of adjustment. So the prospect of doing instant photography for me was not really on my radar because the only Polaroid I had was that Sun 600. However, when I found the SX-70, my demeanor definitely changed. One of the issues you run into when you're messing around with a Polaroid from the 600 series, or even the new I-types, is that the focus is not, well, not a thing. It's basically a complicated pinhole camera, so almost anything that you shoot from front to back is in focus because the aperture is so small. This guy, on the other hand, actually lets you focus. You've got a little ring up at the top here, so when you look through it, you can pull focus to whatever you want and take the picture. This means that you can actually get a lot closer with a camera like this than you would be able to with a regular Polaroid 600. Generally, whenever you get closer than about three and a half, maybe three feet, the subject is immediately out of focus. This, on the other hand, you can get pretty close and there are actually lens attachments to let you get even closer, which I love. You also have more advanced lighting controls. This little dial at the top here actually has the options to change either up or down by almost three stops. Now, with the type of film you have to use, it is specific to this camera. So if you've been around your camera section at Best Buy, you've probably seen those blue packs that say Polaroid. Those will work in this camera, but they are 600 ISO, meaning they are much more sensitive kinds of film. So almost every photo you take is going to be extremely overexposed. What you actually need is this red pack. This is SX-70 specific film. Or if you're doing black and white, you'd find the gray one of these that just says SX-70. But the reason why you have to go with specific film is because this is actually rated at ISO 160, significantly less sensitive than the 600 speed. And even then, you still wanna give this not as much light as you'd think. And that's because 
as it stands where it sits in the center, the light meter tends to like to give this a ton of light. And it doesn't always want a ton of light. You actually sometimes want less to get better contrast. So I generally shoot about one to two stops under what the camera is trying to do. Oh, right. Um, so getting back to focus, just for a quick second on this, focusing on this is a joy. And the reason for that is because this is actually an SLR camera. So SLR stands for single lens reflex. I've explained this before, but essentially there's a mirror inside this camera that kicks up, the shutter moves and exposes the film, and then the mirror kicks back down. But the benefit to that mirror is that you can look through the viewfinder and see directly through the lens. This means that when you're framing up your shot, you get exactly what you're looking at. This is in contrast to a camera like this, which is considered a rangefinder camera. A rangefinder camera is where you are actually looking through a separate lens to the one the film sees. So when you go to take your picture, you actually have to sort of compensate a little bit so you don't mess up your composition. But that also explains why the film is so much slower, because with all those moving pieces, obviously your shutter speed is going to be kind of slow. Just a momentary side note, this camera is dense. Like the bag, the bag is heavy, but the camera itself is a pretty hefty brick. Well, all right, so that's all fine and good. The technical side sounds neat. You can pull focus, you can adjust your brightness way more than you can on a regular Polaroid, and it's slow, so you gotta pick your specific film. Neat, how does it actually look? Well, <laughs> it looks damn good. So like I showed earlier, it is pretty easy to get some overexposure with some of your shots, and it's also very easy to do overexposure when you load the wrong film in like I did. But when you get the right exposure, it has a much more artsy look than I was expecting. It's very different from what I'm used to out of the Polaroid Sun 600. Here's a few shots that kind of compare the two. And overall, I just, I like the look of the SX-70 so much better. It gives you more depth of field. You can get way closer than you would with a Polaroid Sun 600. And generally, it's just, in my opinion, even for its age, a better camera. Now, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but the accessories for this camera are still being made. On top of that, this camera is still getting made. Yeah, so Polaroid is still making this camera and they're charging 390 bucks for it. It's very, very pricey, but considering it's made out of steel and leather and has a mirror and a, like this little bag here to keep things all in check and, and it does this, which is just, oh, oh, that's so cool. Considering all of that, I understand why they're charging as much as they are for a new one. However, I spent 120 bucks, I'm not afraid to say it, I spent 120 bucks on a camera like this with all of its included accessories and I feel like I got a pretty good deal considering I went to a collector site and they were selling the same thing for almost $900. But considering some things are starting to open up, if you have an antique store nearby and they have a camera section, go there and see if you can find these. There's a lot of options. There's an autofocus model if you don't really wanna play with the manual focus. There's these, which are considered the classics. And well, there's some weird ones out there too. <laughs> but at the end of the day, this camera for me has been what has saved me from boredom so many times when I wanna go take pictures, but I know I can't go get them developed. I can just go and snap some shots with this and see the picture almost immediately. I love that. Now, with all that being said and me praising the fact that I don't have to be bored anymore, I can go and get some instant film shots. The film for this, is weird and it's definitely not the most cost-effective film. So my normal go-to film for 35 millimeter is this. This is Ektachrome 100 and this generally runs between about 15 to 20 dollars a roll and this gets you 36 exposures. Something more traditional like Ilford in black and white tends to go for about ten dollars a roll and this also gets you 36 exposures. Now medium format is a little less cost-effective you're talking 12 exposures but you're talking 10 bucks for 12 and generally between five to eight dollars for 12. This single pack of eight exposures, and I'll talk about that in a minute, eight exposures is $20. Ouch. This is not great value for film. I mean, the shots look good, but it's just so expensive per shot, but it does play into something I've said in other videos. I've said in other videos that when you're taking pictures, the more photos you get right, the less you feel like you're wasting your money. And this is sort of what I said, but like hard mode. 
Now, about these eight exposures, these newer film packs from Polaroid will only shoot eight shots, and newer iType cameras and the reproductions of some of these older cameras will register eight shots on the film counter. However, older Polaroids, anything past like the early 2000s, will register 10 because you used to be able to get 10 shots. Now you can only get eight, which kind of sucks. Why they went down in the count, I don't know, but whatever. But yeah, when you go to shoot with one of these, if you go to shoot with one of these, don't be surprised when you're down to two shots left and you spit out nothing when you pull the shutter. <laughs> it's just sort of unfortunate and you gotta keep in mind you're shooting with eight instead of shooting with 10. It sucks and it brings the cost per shot way up. Whereas if they would have kept 10, it would have seemed like at least marginally a better value, but whatever. So at the end of the day, if you're like me, you're a film photographer, but your favorite lab is either shut down or the hours are super limited or there's a travel ban, whatever the case may be, if you can swing it, get your hands on a Polaroid SX-70. I wouldn't really say go and buy the newest one unless you can also swing that. But if you can find one in decent shape in an antique store, it doesn't have to come with the bag like mine did, just one that looks good, opens up, there's no holes in the little bag inside. If you can find one like that, <laughs> go for it. There's some weird ones. There's the autofocus one, which I love the look of it. It's just so weird. There's the black on black, black on silver. Uh, this one, which I actually really like the brown leather, if you couldn't tell by my <laughs> Pentax K1000, I love the look. And go online or, or to Walmart or, or Best Buy or one of those places and get yourself some SX-70 film and go nuts. These are so much fun. You can do so much more with these than you can with a traditional Polaroid. And at the end of the day, you end up with shots like these that I just love. But either way, that's been my solution to my boredom of not being able to take traditional photos is going and buying myself a pandemic Polaroid and getting some instant shots out so I don't have to go to a lab and hope that they're open so I can get things developed. Either way, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you did. Check out some of the other videos. There will be ones linked at the end of this video for other stuff that I've done with tech and photography, the whole nine yards. And apart from that, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know if you guys might be getting yourselves one of these or anything like that. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure to be there and have a good one.